Sports. Mariana is now over 1.3 million in profits. She's just 20 years old. She trusted me. She trusted the process. She learned her favorite pattern, which were morning panic dip buys. What's up, Tim Sykes, Millionaire Mentor and Trader here um, with another section from my most recent trading challenge webinar. If you click the link below, you can apply for my trading challenge. You have to go through a whole application process. We don't just accept anybody. You can offer me 50 or $100,000, some students have. I don't say yes if you have the wrong attitude. If you want overnight riches, if you're not willing to study, if you just have a nasty attitude, um, you're not respectful of people in the community, don't apply, seriously. Um, I don't have a problem finding students anymore. I have a problem finding dedicated students. So if you're not dedicated, if you're lazy, uh, if you just expect money to fall from the sky, don't apply, please. If you do want to learn, click apply now below. Um, and in this video, uh, we're specifically talking about what it takes to scale up over time. Um, you know, so it's like many people rip on the process, like, oh, you want money so fast, you should trade so big. There are penny stock promoters everywhere, they like to rip on my students, students who make like five, 10, $20. See why I think making five, 10, $20 at first is so good. I think it's the right way to be. Watch this video. You might be surprised that there's a method here behind the madness, okay? It's not just like, oh, let's try to make lots of small gains. Um, there's a process. And now, as I'm filming this, I have nearly two dozen millionaire students. Um, so guess what? Like, we're doing it the right way. I want more millionaire students, but you gotta study up, you gotta learn. So watch this video, leave a comment below. Let me know if you promise to be patient with the process. I know that's a lot of P's, but with this alliteration, patience, process, leads to profits over time. Study up. Let's talk about trading small and paper trading. So one of the biggest critiques uh, that a lot of promoters say about me and my students is they're like, oh, you're paying sites to learn how to make 50 bucks is a joke. What they don't understand is that yes, you're paying me to learn how to make $50 at first. And then once you make enough $50 gains, you can take a bigger position. And the same trade, you can make 500, 5,000, 50,000 over time. So this is another case where promoters try to discredit me or discredit what actually works because they don't want people learning properly. If promoters had their way, everybody would just buy their pumps and hold them forever. And if they're you know, successful in getting everyone to think like that, then the price will go up because they're taking a lot of supply off the market and it's just all demand. Very similar to crypto. A lot of crypto promoters are succeeding because they've convinced so many people to just hold their crypto, thus taking the crypto out of the supply. And when there's any more demand, the price has to increase. They're trying to corner the market. For me, I don't care about any cornering of the market. I will never just blindly hold any asset for better or worse. Okay, crypto has been the best performing asset over the past decade. Props to them, they've created a massive, massive market for themselves. But with penny stocks, it's good to really trade small. So throw out any questions uh, if you have them about paper trading or trading small. I'm gonna bring up a, a tweet um, from you know uh, one of my, my top students, Mariana. I remember this uh, tweet and I like showing it because look at this. This is Mariana. She tweeted this back in February of 2021. So this is uh, what, like seven months ago. And she said about eight months ago from you know eight months prior to February 2021. So we're talking what, like April, May 2020. Eight months ago, she was buying OZSC, which is a very heavily promoted name. She was dip buying the morning panic and she made about $38. She kept with it. She kept studying. She got more comfortable with her morning panic dip buys. The market got hotter in early 2021. So she's benefiting from more experience and a better environment. And on the same exact ticker, the same exact pattern, instead of making $38, she made $16,805 on the same trade. She says, this came after many practices, watching them over and over again, gaining confidence in my knowledge and sizing up when I was ready. This one tweet describes exactly why I want people to trade small in the beginning. This one tweet is proof 
that this works. Mariana is now over 1.3 million in profits. She's just 20 years old. She trusted me. She trusted the process. She learned her favorite pattern, which were morning panic dip buys. And now she is banking. And you know, this was in February, 2021. I mean, now in late 2021, she has trading profits, which are much bigger than $16,805. And this is understand uh, an exaggerated example because of Mari, uh, where she has just been one of the most dedicated students and because of the hot market that we had in early 2021, but it's the same gist. Let's say it wasn't as hot of a market in February 2021 and she's doing the panic dip by an OZSC and instead of making $38, she's making $3,800. That's still the beauty of trading. That's still all about scaling up. So yes, make your 10, 20, $30. If you look at Tim Grittani's trades, let's just look for a second. I can bring up endless examples. Now that I have two dozen millionaire students, we can look at their trades. You don't have to guess anymore, okay? View trades on Tim, Tim Rutani is over 13 and a half million. You know, he has some profits where he's making like 50,000, 200,000. But if you go back by date, let's do reverse order for the dates. And you can see his early trades. He's making a hundred bucks. He's losing eight bucks. Look at this. He lost 10 bucks and he says trading implosion, August trades while learning. This was a decade ago, but this is the process. Trade small and you size up over time and you get more confident. All of my top students traded small in the beginning. All right, let's see some questions re relating to trading small and s scaling up later. Uh, Prak Prakash says, started with a $7,000 account, keep losing and move to a $1,000 account now. Good. And again, it sucks to, you know, have only 7,000 to trade or 1,000 to trade, but you're trying to learn a skill that can change your life over time. So losing 1,000, losing 500, losing 7,000, it sucks, don't get me wrong, but it's just market tuition. It's just minimal losses on the way, if you stick with it, where you can make it all back in one good trade. Like if you trade small enough, let's say you lose consistently for nine months, like Tim Grittani did. Tim Grittani was not profitable for his first nine months. Jack Kellogg was not profitable for his first 20 months. If you lose or don't make money for nine months, but you're trading small and you pay attention to what I'm saying, you can make it all back and more many times over on one trade, two trades, three trades in the future when you have more knowledge and more preparation. Rod Navarro says, in the current market environment, do I still think a combination of late afternoon swings with the catalyst and dip buys are the best for small accounts under the PDT? Yes. I trade based on what I think is best. Um, you know, I, this is for me, like you have to choose. Like some students like morning panic dip buys. Some people like first green days. Some people like shorting first red days. There's no one right play. And especially when you're under the PDT or when you have a small account, it just doesn't matter what you really do. Like you, your whole goal when you're starting trading small is not to make as much money as possible. It's to learn as much as possible. So if you lose, let's say $2,000 or $3,000 on a strategy, but you learn a ton, that's a good two or $3,000. I know it's tough to look at it that way. Again, promoter uh, thinking is like, oh, just make money, that's good, losing money is bad. But in that promoter example, you never learn anything. You're always dependent on somebody else. Uh, look at this, Juno, ILUS, in at 29.5, out at 32, Profit of $64. Everyone, please congratulate Juno. The promoters will say, oh, you only made $64. Oh, that's terrible. But Juno's position size was 2,000, okay? Let's just think about that for a second. Imagine two years, three years, five years from now, Juno does that same trade with the memory of how they made $64. And instead of a 2,000 share position, they take a 20,000 share position or a 200,000 share position, let's say five years from now, okay? 10 times that, you make 640. 100 times that, you make more. 
you make 6,400, okay? So that is the, the power of scaling up over time. So if you ever make or lose 10 or $20, and you know, scaling up works both ways. If let's say Juno had lost $64, and let's say you, know, you, you start scaling up, but you're unprepared, you can lose 6,400 with a bigger position too. Everybody always wants to scale up and make the most money, but you don't think about what if you scale up too quickly and you lose the most money. You know, it's all shits and giggles if you lose 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. But what if you scale up too fast? What if you're like some of my two over aggressive students where they're like, no, I'm not gonna trade with a small account. I know what I'm doing. And they start with 100,000. And then they're losing 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 on the trade. Not because, you know, they're so bad, but because they scaled up and sized up too soon with lack of knowledge. It's a double edged sword. You want to scale up at the right time. So don't even force yourself to scale up. I know like if Juno, you know, goes, tells the, their friends and their, their parents and it's like, oh, I made $64, but it's like, wait a minute. I paid Tim Sykes thousands of dollars. This is, this is what I get back. What you're learning is that the small gains is part of the process. Remember this $64 profit. E90 Swag says, hey, Tim, I have about 12,000 to trade. I've been studying for two months. Would you recommend just jumping in? That's up to you. Every single person does things differently. And when you say jumping into trading, like people think it's like black and white. Like, okay, I'm not trading or I am trading. You could trade with 100 shares. You can paper trade. You can trade with five shares, okay? You don't need to go in and bet all 12,000 right away. It's like learning to swim. I know that there's this thing like where like parents throw their babies in and the babies just automatically swim. I don't even like putting my head underwater. I think my mom did that to me and I don't think that I got up right away. You know, I, I hurt my ankle just being an idiot. Like I'm not the most um, coordinated person. I don't think that you should just throw your baby in the water and have them swim. I think that's very dangerous. But if you bring your baby into a shallow pool and you're holding the baby above the water and the baby's like kicking the water for the first time and just learning like what it feels like to be in the water, I don't think that's that bad. Uh, would I recommend starting betting 10% of the 12? Again, every single person is different. You have to choose. What I would say is I would err on the side of caution. If you think that you're right for you know, trading with 10% of your $12,000 account and you're, you wanna take $1,200 positions, I would say take half, say $600 positions. There's no rush in scaling up when you're unsure. The fact that you don't know what number to use means that you're probably pushing yourself a little too fast. The big money that you're making is not gonna happen in month one, two, three, six, nine, twelve. You gotta think about what can you do today, this week, this month, to put yourself in the best position 24 months from now, 36 months from now, 48, 60, 72 months from now. What's your 72 month goals? The stock market is here for life. But in the beginning, you have to build the proper foundation. Is $100 to lose on a $3,500 account small? I mean, look at, I, 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 get, I get shocked by people's willingness to lose. Like if you look at Tim Grittani's early trades, but also just look at my trades. Now you don't even, not even my early trades, just look at my trades. I am worth millions of dollars, millions. And I'm not saying that to brag, I'm just trying to give you perspective. On AXTG this morning, I lost 52 bucks. On ILUS, I lost 855. 855 is one of my, my worst losses in a while. CYBL, I lost $148, okay? Let's just keep going. I want you to learn on your own, but also recognize that you can study my trades and see what I'm doing right, see what I'm doing wrong. CAVR, I lost $27. MDMP, I lost $140. MTRT, I lost $15. HALB, I lost $59. MTRT, I lost $94. FFZY, I lost $62. 
MGUI lost 53, MTRT 430, RGBP 207. So out of all these trades, my $850 loss this morning is the worst trade that I've done in all of September. Three weeks of September is my worst loss. Nope, September 1st, $1,280. That was, but that one, I also had E-Trade issues. That wasn't just me. 295, 130, 195. So long story short, if you review all my trades just for the past month, for example, my two biggest losses are roughly $1,000 each. Most of my losses are 50 or $100. And I'm worth millions of dollars. So you're asking if is $100 a good amount to lose with a $3,000 account? I would say no. I would say I would be more cautious than that. You just have to have perspective. But there's a lot of non-meticulous traders, gunslingers, not worth millions, and they have five, ten, twenty thousand dollar losses, and they also have fifty, a hundred thousand dollar gains. So I'm not the only way to do things. I just like doing things, you know, the safe way. Um Let's see. Feldy says, I've been paper trading for a month. We'll be opening an account on October 1st, opening with 3,000 and have no problem trading very small. Should I post all my trades on Profitly? Yes. Post all your trades to keep yourself accountable and to help others see. You know, like this could be such a better industry if more people just shared all their trades openly. The resistance I face is ridiculous. If any of you talk with Roland, if any of you talk with Dom, Go give them crap for not uploading all their trades. Roland's like over 1.8 million. He's only posted like 1.1. Dom is like, I think, over 2 million now, and he's only posted like 250,000. Get on their asses. This industry should be so much bigger and so much greater if people were more transparent. No one wants to get involved with an industry where it's like, oh, who's real and who's not. It's pathetic. Uh, Jay Gata, great comment here. Uh, treating this as a four, tough four-year degree before I have any money-making expectations. First of all, never have any money-making expectations. How about that? Expect the worst. Don't say like, oh, in year four, I should know how to make money. The market doesn't care what your year four is. <laughs> what if the market's crashing in year four and year five? And your expectations of your four-year you know, degree and then you get out of this hypothetical college is just crushed. Not all years are created equal. You want to be as ready as possible for the best years. All of my new millionaire students were prepared for 2020 and 2021 thanks to having the proper perspective and the proper foundation built in 2017, 2018, 2019. So if it's a slow market, screw your money expectations. Focus on educational expectations so that whenever the next bull market or the next crazy market arrives, then you are prepared. What if you make no money for seven years, but you're studying, you're learning, and then year eight is a hot market and you're prepared? Jack Kellogg has made $6 million in six months. Think about that. This is not a normal job where you have like an annual income and you're trying to get like a 10% raise every year. We as humans like to, you know, think in terms of gradual growth and, you know, gradually having more money. That's not how making millions works. You know, a lot of these startups that get acquired after two, three, four, five years, they make nothing. But while they're making nothing in terms of money, they're growing their market share they're refining their apps, they're working on their technology, they're doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So you have to think of yourself as a startup. And it doesn't matter if you make money in year one or year two, or even a lot of money, because this is so scalable, up to a certain degree. Obviously, penny stocks, we're not making billions. You need to put yourself in the situation to scale up when it is right. Every single one of you should be afraid that you are not going to be prepared for the next mania or the next bull market. I don't care what you do right now, and you shouldn't care what you do in terms of money in your first three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. 
Tim Rutani made nothing his first nine months. Jack Kellogg made nothing his first 20 months. These are the two biggest examples in penny stocks. So automatically, get rid of any money expectations for nine to 20 months, and that's if you're the next Jack Kellogg or Tim Rutani, and that's a big if. Think about what you can do three, four, five, six, seven, ten 10 years from now. How much can you learn in the meantime to be that prepared later on? This is why we have the lifetime challenge so that people can get a better understanding. Oh, I'm not just learning for a year. 